Paolo, Hi. absolute pleasure to meet you. Ah, Nicky. It's, it's my pleasure to meet you. It's not every day you get to meet your heroes, and tonight I'm, I'm going to do that. So I'm quite nervous. I interviewed no. so many fans. Calm, we are okay. We're family. We belong to the same family. You more because you probably were born. Oh, I was born around Hammers here. through and through. I became and that. Maybe make me even more strong because uh, when you belong to somewhere that uh, you felt love straight away, so that will remain forever into your heart. So, so just tell me from the early days, Sheffield Wednesday, Celtic Sheffield Wednesday. Um, obviously, the clubs in Italy, Lazio. Um, Juventus. Yeah, AC uh, Milan and Naples. AC yeah. Milan, Napoli, yeah. Um, when you came to England for Sheffield Wednesday, um, after the incident, I don't want to talk about that because yeah, it's, no. it's been it's been covered many times. How many offers on the table after this happened? Because obviously Sheffield Wednesday wanted to... During my band, you know, because I had 11 matches band, you know, for the... Uh, when I, I was wrong and push uh, uh, Paul Alcock, a referee. I spent three months in Italy to keep going and train and maintain myself uh, really fit because I wanted to come back uh, as soon as possible or I wanted to come back uh, ready once uh, someone gave me the opportunity. And I had three or four offers around Europe. Uh, <sighs> someone even much with much more money in the, on the table, but uh, once I received the West Ham, uh, uh, chance, I say I go there straight away because uh, everybody knew the history of uh, West Ham. Probably we didn't win lots of, you know, trophies. Trophies, yeah. But uh, you know, when you play with a team that is famous around the world for the passion, for the heart, for the atmosphere at Upton Park, you can't uh, refuse. You know, in some way. And then it was was easy for me to say I go straight away now. Even by swim, you know. So it was just the problem. fans that attracted you to the club. Yeah, the the, the, the atmosphere, the um, the story that I heard about uh, West Ham supporters. You know how they are um, uh, uh, close with the club, how they are um, honest, uh, respectful. Uh, I, I, I was uh, um, very happy to hear that uh, for West Ham fan, you can play. Well, they prefer, of course, but you can play really bad. But they can recognize if you play with your heart. If you're playing with your heart. Say, so this yeah. is my place. Yeah. How pivotal was Harry Redknapp in bringing you to the club? Uh, I was good at the first meeting with him because uh, I couldn't believe it. I thought that he was joking with his voice. Hi, hey, Paolo, I love you. <laughs> so I say, I look around, I thought that it was a candy camera. But you know, at the end, it was... Uh, in some way, my savior. Yeah. Because he gave me, probably because he's a, he, he was a fantastic manager, he smelled the business in a good way. I take Paolo Di Cagno in for cheap money, I take advantage, advantage for the situation, yeah. and we're going to have a fantastic player. He was right. Yeah. So I gave him also the, the reason to do this because at the end I pay back him. You know, many, what, what many, did. many times over if you don't you know, know and uh, but uh, between the two, I was more lucky because uh, uh, he gave me the opportunity to play in a Claret and Blue shirt mm. with the Hammers. So I never gonna forget it. So I will thank him forever because of the four years and a half that I spent at Upton Park with uh, my fans, with my team mates, with the club, uh, will remain forever in my heart because uh, those are part of my life. You can't split your private life and your professional life as a footballer because they go linked together and work in the same way. Yeah. So it was a great experience, not only as a footballer, but first it was a person for me and for my family. You know, the, the, the season where you got the 11 game back, I don't know if you was aware, but you was the opposite player of the year and with 11 games gone. You can imagine. Yeah, with 11 games struck out. So you was the Opta player of the year. You can see in, in, in two in two ways. Oh, I was lucky because maybe I should play very bad in those 11 <laughs> games. Or maybe because uh, uh, I had uh, so much hunger and desire to determine it and to make it different. To make, to make it. Not for, for myself, because you want a sort of uh, revenge, you know, because uh, you think, okay, I was wrong, but I wasn't a monster 
I was an a killer, you know, in some way, even if I was wrong, really wrong, I accepted. But uh, I couldn't uh, uh, wait to, to start again and show the people that uh, my natural place was the field with my character. Yeah. Made a mistake, but in a normal way, as many other players doing, you know. And then uh, I was very lucky to play with the Hammers. Oh, of course. Um, the next season, 99-2000, I, I think was your, your best season. My best, yes. Um, um, 16 goals in the league, one goal in um, uh, uh, Intertoto. Intertoto Cup, Inter -toto. Yeah. We, we, fantastic uh, matches that we play away with 6,000 uh, West Ham fans in... Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no, that was a season in, after, uh, in Intertoto. When we won away with a Lampard goal. Uh, oh, Mets. Uh, at Mets. Mets, yeah. And I remember that a uh, few fans arrived at Mets with the Cubs. Crazy people. <laughs> and thought we need to pay back to them with a good performance to make them proud. And, and, and that's what uh, we, we, we have done. Yeah. That was good. Uh, uh, there are lots of memories, you know. Even a bad moment. I, I keep uh, as a good mom memories it's not a contradiction just because i was lucky to go around the europe in england for many years for many times with the western fans and and friends and teammates so i feel when i speak with my friend in italy that even when we had a problem and we had a, maybe some bad moment i keep in my heart as experience as a good moment because i had a chance to grow up as a person as a profession so there you have it, about 30 seconds with Paolo Di Canio. Now, we was meant to have a little bit longer, but um, confusion in, in what we was doing there, um, it was very close to showtime. And as you can tell, as I was just finishing off there, they was um, telling him he had to go on stage. So it was literally out of that room onto the stage. Um, he's a gentleman. He's uh, very passionate about the club, as you can tell. Um, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my hardest um, I'm going to make it my mission, as a matter of fact, to get a longer interview with him. I'm going to make um, the relevant contacts, even if I have to go to Italy. Um, I want to sit down with him and have a proper, proper chat. I had so many more questions to ask, um, but it wasn't to be tonight. But there's a little taste. You've got a little bit about the fans. Um, as I say, I'm going to make it my mission to go and get a, a longer, more in-depth um, interview with Paolo Di Canio. But I hope you enjoyed what you saw tonight. Um, and one thing left to say, come on you irons.